Hi, I'm Em, and welcome to the Knit Your Vlog. So, episode one of the brand new Knit You Up vlog is here. Um, vlogging, podcasting, whatever you want to call it, is something that I've been thinking about doing for a while now, but I've kind of had to work up the courage to talk to a camera like this. Um, and I figured 2024 was a great time to start something new. Why not? So thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing if you decide to. I'm super excited to share more about yarn and projects and craftiness and um, everything that I'm working on in sort of a longer format, like a vlog. So I'm thinking this will be kind of a once a month thing where I sit down and recap the previous month and what I've been working on, if I finished anything, if I have new staff acquisitions, anything like that. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. Um, I think I will start with what I'm wearing, which isn't really a recent FO. I finished it in November, but I have been wearing it a ton and I'm wearing it today, so let's chat. This is the Paloma sweater by Spastico. Knit in uh, Pigment Supplies Superwash Merino DK in the color Raw Sienna. This yarn is so soft and plush. I loved working with it and it's been so cozy. We had a cold snap here um, last week, the week before, and I wore this all the time. It kept me so nice and cozy. I absolutely loved it. So the Paloma sweater is a high necked, boxy fitting sweater. The twisted rib comes down from the neck all the way down the sleeve and culminates in kind of a flowy wide sleeve. And uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I made a post saying, I'm not really into the wide sleeves, they keep getting in the way. And it's true, it's been a shift in getting used to this because I typically am someone who pushes their sleeves up like this and they just kept falling down and getting snagged on stuff. But um, the more I've been wearing it, the more I've been liking the silhouette of the wider sleeve. So I think I will actually keep it the way it is. Um, maybe go back and change the length a little bit because right now they're kind of bracelet length and I think I'd like it to hit just a little bit lower. But I absolutely love this project and uh, definitely wanted to make sure it got its due mention. So then let's move on to another FO. Um, this one I finished in December and it is this self-drafted cowl that I made for my partner. Again, out of pigment and ply yarn, this time her fingering weight, and it is the color The Witcher. Um, my partner actually was looking over my shoulder during the second Witcher update, and he saw this yarn and fell in love. So we got it thinking I'd make him some socks, but then um, the previous winter he had been complaining about not having like a scarf or something and thinking that he would probably like one. So I thought I would make him a nice cozy cowl. Now I've seen lots of cowls kind of in this style with the drawstring and everything for a few years now. Um, I think there were even some fast fashion brands doing it a couple of years ago. Um, and notably some knitters also have patterns for this. Um, I only know Instagram handles so I'm sorry in advance for that, but I will link their Instagrams down below so you can go give them a, a look. But I know um, Max the Knitter has a pattern very similar to this, tri-colored um, and DK weight. And then I know Atelier Cliché has a couple of patterns very similar with the drawstring and everything as well. Um, but I knew I wanted to use this fingering weight, so I just kind of cast on and made it up as I went. Um, I added this cute little, let's see if I can bring it closer, cute little slip stitch um, motif that's staggered all the way through. And then I have a double layer of mohair on the inside. And I'm pretty happy with how this turned out considering that I did like no math and absolutely no forethinking and I just cast on. I think it turned out really, really well and my partner loves it, and that's the most important thing. Um, 
So yeah, very happy with that. I will say like I got probably two thirds of the way through this and I was so over it because <laughs> you're working simul the inside and the outside simultaneously um, with double knitting. So it just takes forever. And even though the slip stitch motif kind of made it uh, potato shippy, it was just a long haul project. And I was kind of like, okay, never again, not gonna do it. But uh, my partner really loves it. And I might be planning to make him another one soon. Well, not soon, probably next fall. So keep your eye out for that. Um, okay, I have one more FO to show you, and this is actually my first finished object of 2024. It is another Paloma, and it's actually a gift knit. Um, I'm a little nervous about this gift knit because it is the first time knitting for the recipient, and of course I decided to make a whole sweater instead of like a shawl, so I'm worried about it not fitting but um, I had my mom try it on because she's similarly sized to the recipient and it looks really good on her, so fingers crossed, but it's beautiful. I am so proud of how this turned out. It's probably like my best sweater ever, technically speaking, like the short rows on this. Let me turn it around. The short rows on the back like I have trouble telling where they are and I'm the one who made it. Um, so I'm really super proud of that. Um, it is knit out of two yarns where my Paloma is only knit out of a DK. I put two yarns together for this one like the pattern calls for. So the first yarn is from the Fiber Company and it is their Meadow Base, which is Merino Baby Llama Silk and linen, which, oh my gosh, that was such a luxury knit. Like it felt so smooth and soft and silky, but it actually wasn't that expensive. And you get 500 yards-ish per skein. So it's fairly economical because I only used one in two thirds, one in three quarters. So I actually had some yarn left over. Um, it is in the color Nightshade, which is this really lovely dark charcoal gray, but it's got some little flecks of kind of silvery um, fibers through it. And then I held it together with uh, Derurum Natura Berenice in the color Crepuscule, which is a mohair silk in a beautiful mid to light gray. And that mohair is so soft. Like, I've worked with quite a bit of mohair, um, and there are definitely mohairs that are a lot nicer than others to work with. Some of them are super scratchy, but this one was soft and silky, and together with Meadow, created like the ultimate luxury knitting experience. I could not put this project down because I just enjoyed the feel of it on the needles so much. So I really hope it fits. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's so light and airy, but also cozy. I'm super excited to give this to her. Um, but now that I've shown you this uh, second Paloma that I made, I do want to bring up one kind of qualm that I have with this pattern which is that the yoke is super deep. So when I made my version um, and I tried it on, like the armhole came all the way down to my waist. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. I don't think the shape is very flattering on me. And I find it really hard to wear with coats, especially since I like a slightly cropped fit. I don't like it to be super long. So I just find it rides up and then that kind of defeats the purpose of wearing a sweater to me because my sides are exposed. So I took it apart um, and I modified how many increases I did. So I think I ended up with like 50 or 52 stitches for each sleeve at separation. Um, and I had to do the same thing on this gray one. Um, I had my mom try it on 
just to get an idea, because again, she's similarly sized to the recipient, and um, the, the armhole was super deep on her as well, which was not the goal for this sweater. So I ended up taking this one up. I made it a little bigger than mine. Um, it has, I think I ended with 58 stitches on the sleeves at the time of separation. And then you cast on four for the underarm. Um, I do have this all noted down on the Ravelry project page for both of these, so you can get my numbers. Um, so that's my word of warning because both of these sizes, the numbers that I ended up with are smaller than the smallest size of the pattern. So just be warned, you might want to um, adjust those numbers to fit your body a little bit better depending on what kind of fit you like. But other than that, I mean, I love this pattern. I love how it looks. I love the fit through the shoulders. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm actually already planning like oh, two more. So you know I love it. Um, so yeah, I can't recommend that enough. Just watch your numbering. So with all those finished objects aside, let's move on to whips. I will start um, oldest to newest and talk you through that. So if you follow me on Instagram, you probably remember that I very crazily cast on a project with hopes of finishing it for Christmas Eve. That definitely didn't happen. But the project is the Somme Cardigan by Cookie the Knitter. Again, that's an Instagram handle. Um, I will link it below. And I got decently far in it. Um, I'm trying to hold it up in a way that you can see it. It's kind of awkward. I'll show you the back. It's this really beautiful lace motif on mohair held double. So it's light and airy, but it's going to be super, super cozy. And I'm making it out of Crystal Palace yarn that I actually thrifted. Um, and I thought it would eat up a lot of yarn, but this is only uh, my second set of uh, mohair. So I've gone through two and a half balls already. No, <sighs> two, well yeah, and then half from each of these. So I guess technically three balls total. I don't know how to describe when you're working down. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's really beautiful and I'm really enjoying it. Um, again, this is a pattern that I modified uh, because the original is quite uh, loose and bulky looking and I wanted this to have a very like 1950s kind of feel to it so it's cropped I mean you can tell it's quite short um, and I'm making it smaller than the smallest size in the pattern to give it that nice snug fit and um, why I stopped is I got to the sleeve and it just felt a little wide to me, I kept trying it on and I just wasn't totally happy with it. So you can see it's not even on needles right now because um, I'm going to take it out and start it again. Um, but I really love this, how this project is turning out. And uh, I just needed to put it on a pause to knit the gray Paloma that I just showed you because that had a deadline to it. And this doesn't have a deadline unless I sort of impose one on myself. Um, so I'm hoping to get back to that one pretty soon here because uh, I it, I really enjoy the lace pattern and it's working up pretty quickly like when I can actually sit down and spend some time on it. So yeah, I'll be getting back to that one. The uh, next thing that I cast on is another deadline knit. Um, the deadline is a couple months away so I'm hoping I can work fast enough on it. but made with this huge cone of merino from Wooly Knits. This is 500 grams, I think. And I lugged this in my carry-on all the way from London for this, just because the price was too good to pass up. And it's worked with one continuous thread. Then in, instead of having to add in extra skeins and weave in ends, and I, this is actually a pet peeve of mine, 
or a knitting piece of mine. Um, I hate weaving into ends. I absolutely hate it. So if I have the chance to work with one continuous strand of yarn, I will do it. Um, and the project is the Sea of Dreams Baby Blanket. This is my progress so far. It's a beautiful, intricate lace pattern with a sweet little pico edge. Um, and again, <laughs> I'm modifying it. I'm actually making it larger than the largest size in the pattern. Um, so it's, you know, big. <laughs> so am I slightly worried about my timeline? Yes, uh, but I am working on it pretty consistently throughout the week and I'm getting more and more comfortable with the lace motif and the pattern repeats. So I'm actually working pretty quickly at this, a little bit faster paced than I expected. And I'm just in love with how it's turning out. So I am very excited to keep working on this. And actually I'm super excited to get it off the needles and blocking because I can't wait to see that lace really open up and shine. All right, I have one more uh, whip to show you, and this is a very special whip. It was a custom sweater quantity order from Lauren of the Little Fiber Co., who was previously the Yarn Attic Co. She recently retired a whole bunch of her bases um, as she's moving into only dyeing on non-superwash yarn. But I love alpaca and she had an alpaca base. So I made sure to snap this up before she made that switch. Um, so this is my custom sweater. Um, I've got the color Driftwood on the alpaca base and I've got the color Evergreen on her mohair base. And oh my gosh, I feel like you're gonna hear me say this a lot because I buy a lot of yarn that fits this description, but it is so soft and so plump and plush. And it's an absolute pleasure to work with and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I actually got quite a bit further on this sweater. Um, I had like basically all of the sleeve increases done, but then I went back to the pattern and I was like, oh, I think I did this wrong. So I took it apart and started the, like took it back to the short rows and started the sleeves again. And I'm not happy. I think I messed up my count somewhere. So I might just take this apart and restart it to make sure that it's as close to perfect as I can get it. Um, but, oh, this is like that Paloma sweater all over again, the gray one, where I don't want to stop knitting this when I sit down, like it is so gorgeous to work with. Um, and I can't wait to take this apart, restart it, knit this up and get this on my body ASAP because it is so cozy and I love how the colors are coming together. So that brings us to the end of this first episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm really excited to share this side of my knitting process and talk more about it and share more uh, about the details of everything that I'm working with. And I really hope that you enjoyed it as well. Uh, I will have things linked down below, including my own Instagram and the Ravelry project pages for everything that I mentioned. And if you would like to tune in next month, feel free to hit subscribe. I do really appreciate you being here and I'm looking forward to sharing more with you next month.